The, the, the Kenya Kwanza government, led by, you know, not government, campaign, led by William Ruto and Mdavadi and the rest, top on the list of the things that were faulting the government of Uhuru Kenyatta for was uncontrolled debt. And they said they were not going to incur any debt. But in the short span of like a hundred days, they have had hundreds of billions of debts from IMF, somewhere in Korea, South Korea, where, and they, they, there is no stopping. So they promised heavily that they would not uh, borrow more. Instead, they are now on a borrowing spree. So is this a question of double speak? Is this a question of coming to face to face with the reality? Or is it, as people like us see, a question of the IMF and World Bank and the other big boys from the West, you know, pushing them, an invisible hand? Because if you stop borrowing, you can only be a friend of the World Bank. You cannot be a friend of the world economic order because they want countries to be indebted, to be in debt. And that's how the world economy runs. And therefore, I suspect strongly that all these things are the invisible hand, the invisible hand of IMF and World Bank. The president promised many things very close to people. He has not been able to implement any of them. Therefore, he had to run away with one. And the easier one was the Hustler Fund. It was a question of getting like 30, 40 billion shillings and quickly putting it in somewhere and you start rolling it. The speed again is suspect because you cannot give people money without proper structures, without proper management in place. So again, you can see populism about the, the, the hustler fund. Again, if you are talking about a fund to help people do business, surely any financial institution, any bank will tell you, it's not just a bill to pay, but the kind of viability of the of what you are doing. So even small uh, startup funds and programs, they usually assess what people want to do. So this one will just give you money and then it's so little. You can see it is populist. It was because all other things he had not been, been able to do, like the cost of living. And therefore you run away with one of these. That's why with the disorganization and all the questions being, being, being asked. And again, you see, it's just a government for Lisa. Yeah. The president has removed a number of subsidies. And I think from day one, when he was being sworn in, uh, one is that uh, as a president, this is his government. He must implement the policies he thinks can work. If removing subsidies is a, is a policy measure he thinks can work, then we have to give it him time to implement those measures, those policy measures. But again, there are those who believe this is IMF in control. Yeah especially because of, the, because of the speed with which that has been done and also because the suffering that the subsidies were supposed to be kind of alleviating, kind of mitigating the suffering of Kenyans. So even if at the policy level you didn't agree with subsidies, like for, for example, I, I, don't, I don't agree with subsidies, you will need to take into consideration the suffering of Kenyans. And therefore, even as you aim to remove the subsidies, that will be long term. But to the extent that it came so fast, some people are reading mischief into it. Certainly, if, if, you, if you come to power on a populist agenda like William Roto, uh, dissolution sets in very fast. Because you fire the expectation and the imagination of the people. You make them expect heaven. And after a short, after a short while, they are realizing you are, not, you are just talking hot air. They could get annoyed. And the many governments that have come to power in a populist way, have always found it very difficult to face a re-election. Uh, and the issue of Mdavadi and uh, Gashagwa, si uh, sibling rivalry is, is normal in the politics. When you create a position of prime minister and a position of deputy president, certainly there's going to be some little friction between the deputy president and the prime minister. We witnessed one between Kalonzo Mshoka, then vice president to Kibaki, and Raila Odinga, prime minister of the coalition government. These are always there. As to how they will continue playing out depends on how crafty the president is on his long-term game. The president could as well be thinking of making Mdavadi his, his successor. That's also possible. So if that is his game, he will know how to navigate it. But if he doesn't want to do to Rigade Gashagwa what Uhuru did to him, then he will stick with Rigade Gashagwa. That means you would be telling Mdavadi, because you are 61, 62 years old, I do 10, Gashagwa does 10, then you will never be president of the Republic of Kenya. It's not an easy thing.